In today's video, I am going to be breaking down James Booknight and how he shoots the basketball. In my opinion, he is one of the best shooters in this year's NBA draft, and I think that he could really turn heads in about two or three years. He's a little bit young in my opinion. Anyways, let's get down, let's check out James Booknight. Now in this first shot, we see a quick step back away from the defense in a transition style of offense. And of course, he has some nice, really great rotation on that ball, but let's really break down his form. So after he takes that step back, what's he doing? Well, of course, in a step back, you're going to be a bit different than you would in a normal shot. However, the main part is going to be the same. And the main part is he is slightly tilted away from the rim, and there is not much, if not any at all, of any kind of a dip. Now, of course, some of the Best shooters in the league have a dip and others don't. Steph Curry is one of those who don't usually have a dip. And because of that, this to me is just a personal decision and something that works for him it may not work for everybody. A dip really quickly is of course when you drop the ball usually be below your waist, usually closer to your knees, and then of course you go up into your set point. So from here he gathers at the waist, no dip, and he goes straight up to his set point. He tends to bring the ball up the middle of his body, and then when he does that, he goes up into a set point, which of course is probably around 45 degree angle on his elbow. Now something that is quite interesting is that he actually shoots from in front of his forehead. So he's got a really low release point, or at least set point I should say, from his shot however he doesn't actually start to extend up into his shot he doesn't start extending his shooting arm until he is near the top of his jumper and roughly at the top if not maybe just a bit on the way down from his shot he releases his shot which is something that usually a player who shoots from the middle of their forehead doesn't usually do usually they have a one motion shot all the way up where the ball just basically continues to travel up to in front of his forehead and then extending however for James Booknight we can see right here that he actually freezes for a very short amount of time at his forehead so that may mean, may mean that he has a lot of upper body strength that he tries to really reduce or there is also a saying it's a very it's an older style of shooting however he may have had an older style coach and this is not saying that this is wrong by any means this is 100% correct that when you're on your way back down from your shot you're actually more stable as a shooter now of course this is a much slower shot it does take a lot of power power off of your shot however you're going to be a lot higher of a percentage shooter because you're more stable when you're on your way back down than when you're on your way up now when we start really looking at his shot when he starts extending his elbow we can see that there is nice energy transfer from his hips up into his arms and then we can also see that he has a soft release which is more on the side of a Steph Curry style shot that's going to give him more arc but it's going to really reduce how much backspin is going to be able to be put on that ball now for how much backspin he has on this ball it really does surprise me that's one full rotation there and then that's going to be a second and now we've got another half maybe a two-thirds rotations on that ball which is good you want to have more two and a half or more rotations on the ball that's going to allow it to hit the rim softer but also something else that we see on a shot is the fact that he actually has a thumb flick which is no real surprise at all um, I'm gonna say that that does not surprise me any player who shoots from the middle of their forehead if they don't have a thumb flick they're probably not shooting very well so with a thumb flick of course it's very risky. This is not something that you can teach somebody to have. This is not something that you really want to have either, even though there's a lot of really good shooters who do have that thumb flick. Basically, a thumb flick is more trouble than what it's actually meant for. You could just fix the sh uh, I'm not going to say fix, but change your shot to the side of your head. But that, again, is going to be a slower shot than usually one from in front of your head because usually it's a one motion. So from there, what, I, what, what I'm basically really trying to say is the reason why it works for James Booknight is the fact that he actually releases the shooting hand or the, sh the follow through hand, sorry, the follow through through hand he releases that first before the shooting hand releases the ball now why is that important well if his thumb was still pushing on the ball when 
that ball was being released, that's going to either push the ball towards the right side, it's going to either do that, it's either going to also reduce the backspin to basically nothing, or it'll give him a flat shot. So if you find that you have no rotation on your on your basketball, if you have a flat shot, or for some weird reason that you just cannot fix, the ball goes right all the time if you're shooting right-handed, that's usually a thumb flick that is staying on the ball too long. So, one way that you can train yourself to get rid of that thumb flick is to not shoot from in front of your forehead. However, that is successful for a lot of people. So, it's just for me, from what my experience is, to teach the lack of like basically zero thumb flick if they if the ball is really trying to do some weird things like a straight shot out to the right or just no backspin at all if it's doing weird things like that it's sometimes just easier to get the player to shoot from the right side of their head now if you wanted to have them shoot at a higher percentage you could take the time to teach them the perfect thumb flick however that's a lot of video overview and it's just sometimes you're looking at years and not something that's going to take months so it really comes down to how young of a player it really is now when he goes for his step back his back is actually straight when he's going up into his shot I haven't seen too many set shots by him usually you would want to have your shoulders over your toes and knees however we don't see that with a James Book Knight, but with these step backs, he is still a very deadly shooter. He has a nice follow through. I really do like that follow through that he has. Nice soft release, nice high elbow above his forehead. And overall, I'm not going to say that his shot is bad. What I'm going to say is his shot is amazing. The one reason is, is because he has a high release. He has a soft touch from shooting in front of his forehead and he's got it quick enough to be able to go up from his gather up into his set point quickly and he's able to get that ball off that soft release is going to give him a lot of arc on that shot which sometimes does evade those defenders as well so even though I was really nagging on on the whole thumb flick thing I'm not against it I am just stating that it's just something that it takes a long time to teach a player to either shoot with it or shoot without it. To shoot without it, usually you're looking at a couple of months of shot work or even a couple of weeks depending on the player. Or you could be looking at changing the amount of thumb flick that they have but still include it and now you could be looking up upwards of years. So it really, it's something that when a player's got it and it's affecting their shot, get rid of it. If it's if they've got it and it's not affecting their shot, don't get rid of it. It's one of those things. Anyways, I hope that this video has helped you be able to shoot the basketball better. If it has, hit that like button and subscribe. I'll see you guys again next time.